Hi, I'm Jeff, and I am going to do a quick tutorial on how I use Manga Studio to make comics. Uh, before we start off, I should say I'm fighting off a head cold, so if I sound stuffy or sniffly, that is why. I apologize. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get right into it. As you can see, I've got a new file open here, blank page. Got two layers over here, the paper, which is the background, and then this first one that I'll be drawing on. Uh, the first thing I like to do when I'm starting a comic is do the panel layout, and Manga Studio makes this really easy once you know how to do it. So what you want to do is go up to the layer menu, go down to new layer, and select frame border folder. And then this will give you options to draw the border, set the border width, turn on or off, anti-aliasing. I have my line width for the borders at 30 pixels because that's how I like it. You can play with that, get it however you want. And then I just hit OK. And you can see we have a border going around the entirety of the file. And it's in its own little layer over here. I can turn it on and off. The next thing I want to do is subdivide this into other sub panels and there are a couple different ways to do this uh, the simplest way to do it is to go down to the little line icon over here in the left hand menu bar and click up here on frame here you can draw your own frames or you can go down here to the bottom and click on divide frame border then by clicking and dragging with my stylus I can just make whatever kind of crazy panel layout I want. So you can get really, you know, wacky with that. But for most of my strips, I typically do a more standard, you know, 2x2 two two or 3x2 grid layout. And the way I do that is I go up to Layer again, and then Ruler Frame, this down here. And there's an option down here that says Divide Frame Border Equally. If you click on that, it pops up this dialog, which allows you to set the number of vertical and horizontal divisions of your border. So if I do two and two, it will split it up into four panels. If I do three and two, you get six, and so on and so forth. I just want to do a simple four panel comic, so I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We have four panels on a border. Now, if you want to move these around or resize things or edit them after it's been subdivided, you can go up to the Object Selector tool up here, and then this lets you just kind of click and drag the various things, move stuff around, resize things, that sort of thing. Uh, what I typically do is I want all of the borders to go straight to the edge of the canvas, so I single-click these little yellow triangles on the outside and that automatically stretches everything out to the way I like it. So there we go. With that done, what I typically do, and you don't have to do this, this is just the way I like to do it, is I will turn off the background layer and then right click over here and click combine showing layer. This will merge the two layers that I've created which effectively just rasterizes the border so that now I can erase it if I want, move it around if I want, do whatever I want with it as if it was a normal ink layer. Not necessary at all, it's just the way I like to work. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and lock that border layer so I don't accidentally draw it or anything and make a couple new layers beneath it. The lower one here is where I'll do the sketching for this comic. So I select the pencil tool, and it gives you a bunch of different tool presets down here. I, I like using the colored pencil, and then I'll just pick a nice shade of blue from my palette. And you can see, you get a nice little pencil. It's pretty thin. You can, you can scribble. You can get different amounts of line weight and things like that, as you would with a normal pencil. So if I zoom in to the actual size, you can see I draw really big. That hasn't changed from back when I used Photoshop. But anyway, you can see the pencil has a pretty nice little texture to it, and Manga Studio has really nice, smooth, controlled inking, so that makes drawing with it a lot of fun. Uh, so now I am just gonna do a really quick, rough 
pencil of what I want this comic to be about. You can probably hear my dog barking in the background because she does not approve of anything, ever. You can see my pencils are extremely loose by anybody's standards. I'm also going faster than I normally would because I'm recording and that makes me self-conscious. But yeah, I'm not going to get too much into the art side of things in this tutorial because, you know, that doesn't really... I don't really have too much insight to share there, but I can definitely show you some of the process with using this specific software. I'm going to leave that last panel unsketched so I don't spoil it. Anyway, so here we have the pencils. If I zoom all the way in, you can see that there's a nice little pencil texture to the line work, but I don't actually care about that too much. For me, it's more just about having a light color that I can see the inks over. To do the inking, I go to the layer above the pencil layer, and I switch to the brush tool. Uh, one thing I found annoying with Mega Studio is that by default it will cycle through a few different tools for each keyboard shortcut, so I remapped all of mine so that now when I hit B it will only select the brush tool, not like four other different things, depending on how many times you click. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use this brush that I like a lot. It's not a stock Mega Studio brush, it's one of the Frendin brush presets, I think, but I like it a lot because its size is not only dependent on how big the brush setting over here is, but also on how zoomed in you are. So I have it set to a 50 pixel brush right now. You can see if I zoom out, it's this big chunky thing that's really chugging because my computer doesn't like recording and drawing at the same time. But then if I zoom all the way in with the same brush, I get these lovely skinny lines with a lot of nice taper on it. So yeah, I, I like this brush a lot. Anyway, inking, pretty much the same process as penciling, just a little bit slower because I'm trying to make it at least slightly less sloppy this time. You can see I'll go in with the eraser tool and kind of fix little glitches as I come across them. And then one thing you'll see me do a lot is create a new layer for inking on top of the other things. That way I can just kind of merge it all down when I'm done. Erase what needs to be erased and keep the rest. So yeah, now that I've got her arm, I can go to that ink layer below, erase the parts that I don't want to overlap. I did that wrong, so we'll do that over again. And then on the upper layer, kind of do the same thing until I get the inks looking the way I want. and then merge those layers together when I'm done working with them. And then same thing over here. You can see I'm super lazy when it comes to actually penciling in things like hands and fine detail things. I just find it 
quicker and more fun to actually fill them in in the inking stage rather than pre-penciling every single little detail. I find this saves me a lot of time. And again, this time it's often quicker when you're doing erasing to actually just use the magic wand or lasso tool rather and go through and select what you're uh, erasing rather than doing it manually. So here we can see her mouth is a little askew so I'm actually gonna select it with the lasso tool and use the transform tool. Apple T since I'm on a Mac you can scale things, rotate them, all that sort of thing. I just wanted to rotate it and move it a little bit, so that's what I did. So there's panel one. I am going to do a cut here, and I will see you back when everything is inked. Bye. Welcome back. Here we have the finished inks for this awful, awful comic. Now we're going to move on to coloring. So in order to do the coloring, I have a pretty simple process. I make a new layer beneath the inks, and then I fill that with a solid color. In this case we'll use pink because it works. I will then go up to the ink layer here and I'll click this little lighthouse icon. That makes this the reference layer. So from now on anything I do on this image will be referred from the ink layer. So I won't be able to color over the lines, that sort of thing. The great thing about reference layers is that it works on every other layer. So what I can do is make a new layer beneath the solid pink or between the solid pink and the ink. So this is where I'll be doing the actual coloring. So now I go into my paint bucket, which I've conveniently titled Poo, and making sure that this multiple refer setting here is checked, I can now just go in and manually drop in with the paint bucket all of the flats for this comic. So you can see as I zoom in oops, that it's coloring in all of the closed off areas. There's a gap there so it fills the whole thing but there's not a gap there so it doesn't fill the whole thing. This is great. One thing that I neglected to do that I need to is add the panel borders to the inks. That way it won't do crazy shit like that when I try to fill in background colors. You can see if I turn that off, it's because there's nothing actually separating all the individual panels. So what I need to do is go up to the frame borders, duplicate that layer, and then merge the lower layer into the inks. So now, when I delete everything, I've got all of the inks and panel borders on one layer that I can then refer to when coloring. So now, if I go in to color people different shades of stuff, you can see it will only do what I want it to do. One of the cool things about Manga Studio's paint bucket tool is that you can do single clicks like you would in Photoshop to color things, but you can also click and drag, and that will actually kind of work like, I guess it would be like a smart paintbrush, where it will automatically fill in every empty layer that you drag over. Sort of like a paint bucket that is also a brush. It's hard to articulate, but it's a really cool feature. It speeds things up a lot. So I basically just want to go in and do all my color flatting. And it's a pretty quick process by and large. You can see there's a gap there that I need to fill in. So I'm just going to select black and go in with the brush. Still on that lower layer. And now I can just manually fill that. And you can see there are still some little gaps here and there that don't get completely filled in. And I can just fix those with the brush. That's why I like using a bright color 
for this lower reference layer. It makes those little gaps pop out more. They're easier to find and fix that way. Big Mate's hair. Typically when I'm doing hair shading, I like to pick the darker color first and then use the magic wand tool and the brush. I can then go in, kind of scribble in some quick shading like that. And that's generally how I do all of the shading uh, for my comics, using the magic wand and the brush tool. done. I just have to go in and do a couple little more detailed things such as filling in the whites of the eyes, stuff like this. This is typically where I'll add any highlights that need to be done, you know, boring stuff like that. Well, this is a very simple comic so it's not going to have a super involved background, but I do still want to show off the perspective ruler tool because it's completely made me love drawing backgrounds now. So I just want to show off what it does. So we'll use this fourth panel as an example. Uh, the way the perspective ruler works is you go up to the layer menu and go down here to ruler frame and you'll select create perspective ruler gives you an option for one, two, or three point perspective. And I'm going to pick two layer, two point perspective, and that creates a new layer beneath everything else with these guidelines on it. Use the object selector tool over here. You can, oops, with that layer selected, you can rotate that perspective ruler and get it lined up however you want. You can move it around to create an effective camera angle. You can move the vanishing points along the horizon line to figure out how you want it set up. And just using the regular move layer tool, you can then position it however you want. You can even rotate it and do crazy, you know, Dutch angle things and stuff like that. So it's a really, really powerful tool for making backgrounds. In this case, I'm gonna set it like that and we'll say they're on a sidewalk because that'll show it off. So on the layer with the perspective ruler, I'm gonna zoom in and I'll select the pen tool. It will give me a horizon line. And then if you see here, I can make a lovely little 3D grid. And that's just the rough version, but for the sake of this comic, like I said, we'll, we'll put them on a sidewalk. So, love it there, and there. We'll add some things like that. It's not super clear at this angle, but you can see just by adding a few basic straight lines here and there, you can get some convincing 3D backgrounds for very little effort. All right, now it's time to letter the comic. I'm gonna go down to the text tool. I have all of my fonts set up the way I want, and it's time to lay them out. 
So I'm just going to type things in here. Now that that's done, you can manually transform things by dragging, or you can go over here and edit things the way you want. You can move text around. You can see that whenever you enter in a new uh, unit of text, it automatically creates a new layer for that on top of everything. I find that pretty handy. font here, so I'll just go down to the menu. You know the drill. Now that that's done, I can do some speech bubbles. The speech bubble tool is really cool. It automatically detects whatever text you're drawing under and immediately snaps to that layer. So I'll zoom in on this speech bubble here, go to the balloon pen tool under the text menu, and then I can just draw an oval. And you can see it automatically put that in the same layer as the actual text. With that layer selected, I can now add a little tail. And you can basically just go through very quickly and do this with everything. In the case of pint size, I want to use a rectangular bubble, so I can just use the tool for that. And there's a neat little balloon tail tool that automatically do, does balloon tails for you that I like using for the rectangular things. And there you go. We have a finished terrible comic and a finished terrible demo. Thanks.